dispute. Okay, and obviously with factual based disputes, we're going after our blatant inaccuracies, right? So we're talking about different balances, different dates, things that jump right off the page and say, delete me immediately. And here's the deal. You want to send proof if you have it, because otherwise you may just get a rejection, a denial, a uh, verified, certified as accurate by the creditor. And any proof that you do have, while it may not be looked at, you definitely want to be logging these things because if you have to go to the last step in stage four, which is contacting the CFPB, you need to have a, a log of all of this. Okay. So now, 30 days later, we're on stage two, our second dispute, and this is where we're going to set the follow-up. This is one I call game land, right? So this is where we get a feel for the games that they're playing, meaning the credit bureaus, and we're creating our plan of attack, okay? Did they respond? If so, was it within a week? If it was, it all comes down to your method. You used the wrong method, okay? And this happens a lot when consumers send out dispute letter templates like 609, 1681s, and all that kind of stuff, all right? So when you send that out, you're going directly into their automation, or it might not even, not even pass go and just get rejected because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for templates, okay? So was there an investigation at all? If not, there's a very specific way that you want to respond. We're going to talk about about that in a different video but let's go over to the second part in stage two which is our violation round okay so in our violation round we are going after the notice of dispute was it entered within 30 days after they received your first dispute if not it's a violation pursuant to section 6 uh, 623 okay did they update or change the date last reported or this might say uh, status update date or date last reported. Um, there, there's three different ways that it might be on there. But if you're using identity IQ and you can access a discounted link down in the description so that you're not paying their full price of $29.99, you can get it at $21.99. And just saying, so you know, a little bit of caveat there, that is my affiliate link. But you are going to get this information directly off there. All the big guns, right? Date last reported, the day, uh, notice of dispute, the date last active, the date last paid, so on and so forth. All of the big guns that I use to remove very difficult accounts, all right? So this is an important round because we're using, pay attention to this, okay? We're not just sending our dispute letter. A lot of people think you just send a dispute letter. No, this is important because we're using our initial letter, our second letter, our initial credit report, and our second credit report, just the pages that are relevant to our accounts to prove our violation, okay? Go and look at the last step, contact CFPB for violations, okay? And obviously the timing on this varies, but you should only be contacting them after you've exhausted all remedies. That is not, it does not mean you send one round of disputes and now you're all of a sudden with the CFPB. No, and guess what? There's an article and I'm going to be showing you this in the next video. The CRA has only responded to 2% of 700,000 complaints between January and September of 2021. Make sure when you do submit your complaints, you're not sending out crap, okay? So now if your violation round doesn't work, that's okay. Nobody ever said that you're just going to send one or two disputes and that your negative items are going to come off. No, there's a very specific flow to this and there's a process, okay? Your credit would not be the determining factor of basically everything, where you live, where you work, how much money you have, where your kids go to school, all that kind of stuff. It were If it were as simple as just screwing up your credit and doing it all over again, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now on our fourth round, we're at 120 days. This is Tactic Central. Your remaining items can be disputed using one of hundreds of tactics for credit sweeps specific to the account or accounts being disputed, right? And obviously there's no two same credit sweeps. This is where your understanding how an account should be reported becomes important and, excuse me, becomes important in what an inaccuracy should be considered under FCR and Metro 2, right? And this is actually where a lot of consumers drop out because of lack of understanding of the process. And like I said, trust and believe if we're as simple as everyone sending out one to two disputes to remove any negative item, your credit report would not be the determining factor of virtually everything. If you go to get a car, what do they look at first? They look at your credit. You go to get a house, what do they look at first? They look at your credit. If you go to get jewelry, what do they look at? They look at your bank account and or your credit report. If you go and apply for anything, what do they look at? Your credit report, if you go to get a good job, a career type of job, what do they look at? They look at your credit report, okay? So 
just use some common sense here, okay? Now, here's the deal. You're looking at this chart and you're like, well, Kristen, I see all these arrows going everywhere. Well, obviously that's because you might be able to jump to different tactics, right? Different rounds. It all depends on whether something was removed and or how it was updated by the bureaus or the creditor or collector on your credit report. So if we're starting at our initial dispute and we go to game land, now if the account was removed but something else was not, now we can jump down to the evolution land method or we can go to the dispute funnel. Or if we're at tactic central, we can jump down to disputing any remaining, remaining negative items and then go to the CFPB, okay? So that's why it's important that you download this and go get your copy so that you can look at this and use it when relevant to your specific negative items, okay? So now we're in stage three. And yes, any credit sweep can be broken down into different stages. And if you're looking at the credit sweep process in general, there's very specific stages as far as removing negative items, building your credit, and then going and building up your score to get your total entire credit health, okay? So with the evolution line method, and I will, if I can remember, I will link that webinar down in the description. It's very, very important because this is where you would manually locate changed information on the report from previously disputed elements. For example, the date last active. Now remember, you only want to use a dispute reason once, okay? If you said it once, you're not going to say it again. However, with the evolution line method, you can actually stay at the top of the hierarchy and reuse a biggest impact dispute if the information has changed. So it, let's just say it, um, the date last active says 1-1-2021, one, one, uh, right? You dispute it. Now you go to your violation round and you notice, hey, wait a second. They changed 1-1-2021 one, one, to the current date, which is um, today is 1 11 2022 okay so obviously they changed it now you can re-dispute because of the changed information so you wouldn't be disputing all three bureaus you're only disputing the bureau who has changed the information and this is a major loophole to reuse major dispute reasons that delete really difficult accounts instead of having to use fairly worthless dispute reasons at the bottom of the pyramid where we don't want to be Okay, so our next round is our dispute funnel, and this encompasses multiple different rounds within this tactic. Okay, and this is where you're actually going to follow up to any future dispute, regardless of whether the bureaus reply, don't reply. We want to limit their responses and shift them towards our next dispute. This is also recommended for extremely difficult accounts. So as an example, right, we have a student loan, it has late payments, and they actually begin at 90 days. Okay. So you're not seeing any 30 days or 60 day late payments. It's just, okay. 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 90 days late, but they're reported on different months by each bureau, right? So knowing that they're going to come back and say verified or certified as accurate by creditor, you would send round one as inaccurate due to the first late payment at 90 days and round two as inaccurate between all three bureaus because it can be proven easily, corrected or removed by the bureaus directly without the creditor and proven by the creditor to be used against the bureaus, okay? So that's just one example of setting the follow-up, okay? We're at the end of this, we're at stage four, we have remaining negative items, okay? Or you don't, maybe you're just done. The dispute funnel or evolution on the method got rid of everything, great. Now you're just done, move on to building your credit and raising your score. But if you still have negative items, now, bit of a caveat here, you can add a bunch of different tactics in here, but I'm just giving you, giving an example of a bulletproof credit sweep dispute tactics flow, okay? So we're going to use factual disputes and we're going to use the pyramid method, the dispute hierarchy, so on and so forth to remove the rest of those negative items. Now, we're going to get, get to a point, depending on what we're disputing, where it's just like, okay, I've done what I could possibly do. I've removed everything that I could without either A, going to the CFPB for violations or B, suing the bureaus, creditors or collectors, okay? So depending on you, depending on your file, depending on many different factors and responses from the bureaus or lack thereof, that's going to, that's going to tell you when you should get to this point. But I say normally it's around 12 months. Now you may be freaking out here saying, Kristen, you're telling me I'm going to have to dispute for 12 months. Well, Hey, normally I would say nine months, but obviously things are extremely difficult to remove right now because it's not just you sending a dispute to people sitting around a table. No, it's millions and millions and millions of consumers that are disputing all sorts of stuff. Okay. So there's going to be violations. They're not going to respond. It's going to take time. And especially because because 
it's all being automated all right there's no people in this so all things considered yes this is taking a little bit longer but this is why it's so important that you understand how to use these tactics and what a factual dispute is and to not use worthless dispute methods like sending in templates because you're going to call me up four years down the road and say hey you know what i need help now and i'm going to say hey guess what you should have contacted me four years ago before you went and did identity theft before you sent a 609 letter before you sent this stupid four page pursuant to this that and the third bolded text type of letter that's not going to get you any results okay so are you going to send a CFB complaint at six months? No. Are you going to do it at nine months? Possibly. Are you going to do it at 12 months? Yes, most definitely. You should not be disputing unless there's a very specific reason past about 12 months. Now, you have to look at the dispute type. If it's a student loan or a bankruptcy or a foreclosure or a possession, that's going to take you nine to 12 months. If it's a medical collection, it's going to take you an average of three months. That's if you're disputing with the bureaus and you're disputing with the collectors. If you're disputing late payments that are older than two years, it's probably going to take you an average average is six months, okay? So understanding that these specific negative items take a certain amount of time is going to help you and allow you to formulate your plan of action to actually get results instead of sending out worthless disputes or not disputing at all because you're getting 